This is going to be my first painting I've ever done here in America. I'm really excited to start painting. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm George and I've just arrived in America. I'm in Seattle in Washington and I've never been here before and in fact I've never ever painted in America before. I'm just getting a train and I'm just looking around at some of the colors in the trees in the distance and they've got such a lovely color, very interesting shaped trees, a lot of pine trees. The sun is shining, it's a blue sky, but it's not too hot either. So I think this place is gonna be amazing to paint. Um, I didn't really know much about Seattle at all. So definitely a new experience for me. Let's uh, explore the United States. So I'm just traveling on the light rail, but just beyond the um, airport, they've got these fantastic uh, mountain range. Really light blue, you know, quite far in the distance. And then the colors again of the trees, we've got these water leaves uh, or the fall as they call it here in America. I've tapped in with my walker card, which is what you need to get around on the tram service in Seattle. We're here at Edmonton Port in Seattle. I'm going to get this ferry out there in the distance. I'm going to cross over this big lake and onto the other side and find a spot to do a painting so i'm just really impressed by the scenery you can see they've got lots of these pine trees in the distance and then these huge mountains which are caped in snow at the top and we are actually very very close to canada right here it's definitely a bright sunny day it's a little bit cold because we are quite far north and so i've got my ticket already to get on this ferry and when it comes in i'm gonna hop on go to the other side and then find a good painting spot. Hi guys, so I found the composition that I want to paint. I really love this view over the bay you know i'm not actually sure whether this is fresh water or sea water because the seattle is sort of an archipelago but anyway i like this vast landscape uh, of water and then you can see this really huge mountain in the distance and you can actually see the city of seattle in the distance there you can see some skyscrapers which are completely dwarfed by that massive mountain now there is some challenges which uh, a scene like this presents itself the first challenge being there really isn't much going on in the foreground. Normally the foreground's where you get your most contrast, your darkest darks and your lightest lights. But basically the foreground is just going to be this mass of water. And then the focal point, at least for me, looking at this scene is that mountain in the distance. But the problem is our main tool, our main compositional tool to get a focal point is tonal value contrast between light and dark and there really isn't much of that going on so the scene presents itself with some interesting challenges i'm going to have to come up with a way of making the scene interesting throughout there isn't a lot of colors going on it's all in that kind of blue section on the color wheel there's a bit of yellow in the sky but it's quite subtle the warmth of the sunlight and the rest of it is quite blue and gray but anyway, this is going to be my first painting I've ever done here in America, so I'm really excited to start painting. So on my palette today I'm using titanium white, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow deep, a bit of yellow ochre, raw umber, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, manganese blue, and ultramarine blue. So basically a warm and cool of each of the primary colours. My medium today is just uh, Sansador, which is a low odor mineral spirit. I'm painting on a 35 by 25 centimeter plywood panel that I've toned with gesso. And I've also toned it to a slight gray tone as I don't really like working on the pure white of the canvas. Let's start painting. 
I start by sketching a loose grid onto my panel, which helps me keep track of the vertical and horizontal relationships between the shapes within the scene in these early stages of the painting. I'm painting using a thin down mix of my ultramarine blue and manganese blue to paint the distant mountains as well as this initial grid because this colour will blend in nicely to the sky so it won't muddy the sky colours when I paint over this whereas if I were to paint with a darker colour this can sometimes mix with the lighter colours of the sky and can be a bit distracting and require a bit more painting to hide the underdrawing. Here I'm painting in the shadows of the clouds in the sky using a colour mix of ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, titanium white and just a small touch of raw umber to make a low chroma purple. Using a new paintbrush, I'm now painting in that warm glow of the sunlight around the mountain. This light mix is made up mostly of titanium white and yellow ochre, with a small touch of cadmium red and an even smaller touch of manganese blue, just to tone down the orange colour of the mix slightly, as the overall colour is not very chromatic, in nature, even though it does contrast dramatically with the cool, bluish purple of the mountain. This contrast of the warm light and the cool blues in the sky and the mountain is in fact what gives the sky a dramatic and colourful appearance, as in isolation neither of these colours are pure chromatic colours, but when placed side by side, each colour makes the other appear more vibrant as blue and orange are complementary colours so they're opposite each other on the colour wheel and when placed side by side each colour makes the other appear to be more vibrant. I'm also paying close attention to this warm cool colour temperature contrast in the sky and playing on it as a compositional tool to help draw more attention to this giant mountain in the distance. As it is so far away, I don't have much wiggle room with the tonal values in this area, as things far in the distance become lighter with less contrast in value. So by painting the warm, yellowish light around the mountain, it helps bring more focus to it. As I've been painting, some of the blue sky has appeared, and I think it's a welcome addition to the scene. Using a mix of ultramarine blue and manganese blue, titanium white, and a small touch of alizarin crimson, I'm painting the section where the blue sky is breaking through the crowds. I alter the colour mix slightly as the sky gets closer to the horizon by adding a bit more titanium white and manganese blue to the lower section of the blue sky. I'm also using this blue section of the sky as an arrow leading the viewer's eye towards the mountain, helping me achieve my goal of making it a focal point. In the actual scene the sky doesn't quite do this, but I think it's always important to think about compositional design whilst painting, rather than just copying nature. And in fact many of the great landscape painters throughout history, such as those of the Hudson River School, which was a group of artists painted in America in the mid 19th century, they would change and invent their landscapes to the point that they often don't bear an accurate resemblance to the place they depict, but work as a highly engaging painting, often conveying a sense of awe and wonder. As I paint the clouds, I'm focusing on keeping the transitional edges soft, as clouds are soft objects by nature, added to the fact they're quite far away which makes things appear softer too. To create this effect, I'm using filbert brushes, which leave diffused marks, 
as they don't have as sharp an edge as a flat brush. I'm now painting the layer of land which sits in front of the mountain. As this is closer to the foreground, it's darker. However, I still add quite a bit of titanium white into this mix as I need to allow room for another dark contrast between this section and the section of trees on the right hand side which are closer and therefore darker in value. This section has a bluish purple hue as due to atmospheric perspective things in the distance typically become bluer in colour and don't have the same extent of contrast in value as things closer to the foreground. Here I'm starting to paint the water. I'm using a mix of titanium white, ultramarine blue, yellow ochre and a touch of alizarin crimson to create a cool grey. I'm thinning the paint mix with my medium to help me cover this area quickly with the approximate value and colour. As I paint I add a bit more ultramarine blue and some cadmium yellow to my colour mix to make the water in the foreground darker in value with a more green hue. I also make a separate colour mix for the sections of water which are picking up reflections from the warmer colours in the sky such as this mix which has a bit more yellow ochre and titanium white added to it. Now I'm painting the mass of trees, which are closest to the foreground. This section presents me with the darkest dark in the painting, and as a result, helps push for distant levels further away, adding to the sense of depth in the scene. Also, as the trees are closer to the foreground, the effects of atmospheric perspective are less, and as a result, there is more color variation in this section. Using a lighter grey mix, I paint the sections for the houses amongst the trees. I also add a light orange colour for the rooftops and some small dabs of slightly toned down white to pick out the lightest sections of the buildings. To paint the white snow on the mountain, which is catching light, I add a touch of yellow ochre and cadmium red to my titanium white mix which makes this mix a warmer colour and also makes it slightly darker as my yellow and red are darker in value than pure titanium white. This helps me distinguish the snow from the blue sections of the shadow and rock on the mountain whilst keeping the value shifts between them minimal as when things are far away in the distance the contrasts in tonal value are always very subtle Here I'm painting more blue into the bottom right hand corner of the water in my painting to portray the reflection of the blue section of sky. I'm also using a small filbert brush to paint some light brush strokes for the ripples in the water. By adding these subtle details to the foreground, it helps add more visual interest to this section which I had initially been concerned when starting the painting that this section was too empty and a bit dull. The foreground of the scene is also the section where we can see the smallest details with the most clarity. So by painting these ripples here, it helps me capture the appearance of the water surface. And I don't need to worry about trying to paint all the ripples in the mid ground and the distant water. Here I'm painting this small sailing boat which has been going back and forth throughout the duration of my painting. 
I like how including this boat adds more visual interest to the foreground, as well as a sense of scale to the vastness of this landscape, which without an object with which we are familiar with its size, such as this boat, it can be difficult to comprehend the enormity of the distant mountain and the vast expanse of the water. It's been a really beautiful view to paint. For most of it, I could see quite clearly the mountain in the distance, but also as the light changed, there became a few more darker contrasts in the water in the foreground, uh, which I had quite a lot of fun painting. And I think it does add a bit more to the scene than the original scene that I started with, which this whole area was very flat. So by adding a bit more definition here, I think I managed to add a bit more depth and also add a little boat in, which I think adds a bit more visual interest into the foreground section of the painting so if you enjoyed that please do give it a thumbs up uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel i'd really appreciate it you can also click that heart with the dollar sign in which says super thanks you can click that heart and you have the option to contribute as little as two pounds to my youtube channel uh, which i'd be really grateful if you decide to do that because it helps me make more videos and keeps me motivated to keep creating content like this video. This is my first ever painting in the United States and a few people came past and spoke to me. They're all really nice. And surprisingly, the first person who spoke to me when I was painting was actually British, also living in London. And he was here on an artist residency. So definitely felt like a small world. Thanks for watching. I'm going to paint a lot whilst I'm here in America. I'll see you in the next video.